So what is an anthropomorphic creature? Come here, you. Come over here. Get out of here. Um, an anthropomorphic creature is when you take the characteristics of a human and apply them to something that is not a human. That's basically all it is. This is something that you've seen a million times. You might not have heard of that word before. Though. It's a long word, anthropomorphic. Antho part just means human, morph just means to change. So change it into a human. Um, so you can see this, this is a common example like uh, Daffy Duck doesn't it kind of looks like a duck, you know, but like the duck stands upright, it talks like a human. The feathers have been kind of morphed into fingers. Uh, the feet are bigger than they would be, you know, it's just kind of like a hybrid, a cross. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do is synthesize a creature uh, with the proportions of a human. So we'll learn a couple things as we go. We're going to try to get started on learning how to draw a human, okay? But it kind of lets you off the hook if you can make it into something that's made up, like a make-believe thing, because it doesn't have to be perfect, and it might be a little more fun. I think it'll be more fun. So, uh, anthropomorphism one more time, just so you, sh you know, it's just giving uh, animals or things or creatures human characteristics. That's all, okay? So, if I ask you to synthesize something, I'm asking you to make something, so if you combine a few ideas together and yield something new, you know, you make something new out of, it's like a recipe, you know, you grab a few things, you put it together and you made something. Okay, that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking you to copy something, although that's a good exercise. I'm not downing it, but that's not what I want you to do. So please don't give me something that you copy. I want you to make it up yourself. I'm not gonna be harsh or critical on your work. I'm gonna love your work, whatever you do, if you really try. So just follow the directions. Um, the process is, is this. Choose a creature. I'm going to do a rabbit. Okay? You could do a dragon or a fish, whatever you choose. Okay? I don't have to list every creature or animal, unicorn, whatever, as long as it's kind of like an animal. Okay? Um, and then choose a job or a career or a human role, like a teacher for instance, or, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to do, like, if I say an example, like a rat and a garbage man, like, you got to think about it, maybe think a little deeper, you're like, would a peacock garbage man be the same kind of character I want, or like, a, you know, a rat uh, diplomat, <laughs> it's like, what's the right animal for, like, what you want to do? Um, if you, whatever you do is fine, but like there's there's more levels to this and then may meet the eye at first. It's like I think a rat garbage man is really good. Or if you do like a role reversal, think of something that's really fancy. I don't know what a really fancy, like a poodle <laughs> as a garbage man. That might be funnier. I don't know. Or it might be cooler. It's like I could just see the poodles, you know, getting his beautiful white hair all dirty, picking up garbage or whatever. But uh, it could turn into something bigger. You could create a whole series out of this. You could create a uh, comic strip or a, a comic book or a cartoon, um, uh, illustrated children's book or anything. You know, so this could turn into something really cool. So, so you made a choice. So the rat garbage man. I'm going to be doing a, a rabbit astronaut. Um, gather some references. You only have two things to synthesize. The, the role or the career and the and the animal. So I want to get a bunch of pictures of rabbits together, just something to look at. I'm not doing again. I'm not copying them exactly, but I don't have perfectly in my mind. I, I know what a rabbit looks like and I could draw one, but it wouldn't be quite the same if I really need to get something just so. So it's not cheating. All artists do this. They use references. They shoot photography for. For their own reference or they gather reference um, pictures on the internet you can just do a google image search i put them together into a document for my convenience just so i can uh, print it out and just have it at my desk rather than having to keep looking at the computer so much you know you just have it open on your computer though if you want so get some reference images together that's step two step three 
is uh, draw your character according to this eight heads scheme that I'm going to give you. Um, this isn't something I'm making up. Like all artists know about this, our teachers teach this. It's usually seven heads, but we're doing eight because the math is easier. An eight head character is more like a heroic figure, like a, like a superhero, like Superman or something like that. It's usually a little taller, bigger, more muscular. But uh, you can adapt this however you want. You know, if you want to have like a, you know, a skinny, short character and for some reason the body looks different, do, go ahead and do that. But try to follow this and understand what I'm trying to show you as far as size relationship and ratio. This is this big compared to this, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I'm going to show you how to start laying it out. I'm going to get all of my stuff out. I need a ruler. A pencil and eraser which I already have. I'm going to try to finish this in color. I'm going to use colored pencils but I don't know if I have enough. I'm going to look around for some more. Uh, whatever you have around. If you don't have uh, anything to color it in with at least give me like a really nice uh, clean pencil drawing. Shade it or you could use pen. Uh, you, that's a nice way to do it. Uh, but Use whatever you have but the minimum is a nice clean finished pencil drawing. All right. All right, I've got together everything that I need to do this job. Now, I want you to let yourself relax and not worry too much. I'm like, let's not miss what we're trying to learn here. Uh, I, I'm trying to give you something fun to do. It gives you a lot of leeway for creativity. Remember, I don't want you to copy an existing drawing. Make up your own, even if it's you don't think it's as good. Let's start somewhere. Um, I think it'll be very good. Uh, my, my reference images. This might just be up on your computer screen, but I printed them out. I have a printer here, luckily. Um, so I have an astronaut, a couple different views. Of course, I'm going to make a lot of this stuff up, but, but this is helpful. And then I have a rabbit. I have Peter Rabbit here from the movie, which I never saw, but uh, I came across it in my search. It's like it's already anthropomorphized. Um, I don't want to copy that outright, but I thought they did a really good job on it, keeping him like look really looking like a rabbit, but it's kind of a human at the same time. Uh, nice job by the artists. Uh, and I also have this sheet that yeah, seems maybe a little complicated to you if you just try to look at it, but it's really not. And let's learn some of these things. We're re really looking at this one, and as I go, we'll just do this. So. Here's your paper. Get a regular size sheet of paper. I want to find the middle. Uh, if I measure it, mine is 12. Um, yours may be 11. Uh, let's just find the middle because the middle is the middle no matter what size it is. And I'm going to put a light line. I don't want to keep the line there so I don't make it too dark. Um, I want to make this uh, drawing six inches tall so so that way it'll fit everybody's paper so I'm going to go three above and three below for six now I know you're pretty good at math you can make it bigger I, I would rather make this bigger but I you know I would have a bigger piece of paper but um, I have to work within what I think you have on hand uh, I know you have a piece of notebook paper or plain white printer paper around, so use that. So this total height is six, top to bottom. The feet will be on the bottom line, the head will be touching the top line, that's important. And the entire pelvis and upper body will be above the middle line, above the equator, so to speak. So no part of the upper body is below the middle so that means the whole entire bottom is made up of nothing but legs believe it or not that's true okay so like the bottom of your zipper where your two legs come together that's above the midline of the, your entire size of your body okay that's pretty much true now these are general rules and they you know all rules are have to be flexible but uh it's really really close and we get close and then we get it perfect and we need to get somewhere so you'll be confused for a minute sometimes until you start getting something down so this body is kinda like a, the proportions of a superhero 
let's divide one more time. So I took the 6 and I cut it in half. Now I take the half of the 6, which is 3, and cut that in half. And that's 1 and a half. Okay. So I'll make a second set of lines. This is called a subdivision. We already did a division. If we divide again, it's drilled down one more time. I call that a subdivision. Let's just cut it into four equal size uh, rows. They're all one and a half inches big. Now, when you go to draw a character, you know when you get more experience, you may not even you probably won't do any of this. You just know it, okay? But uh, let's learn it now. So make sure the head is touching here. It should take up about half of this. Make sure you include a neck of some sort. All right, the armpits will be like kind of like right on this line. the The body is going to be whatever width the head is here. It's times two, so I could draw in two heads here if it helps me to reckon the width. Okay, and again, this is the top, like where the pelvis is. Okay, so <clears throat> this part of the the shoulders actually slants down and the arms can come out so let's say if we make the shoulders about this big just doing a, a rough layout first the the knees will be on this line okay the feet and we're looking at this this figure straight on so the some foreshortening is occurring with the feet kind of pointing straight out, out, straight out at us. Excuse me. So I don't know if I might just make a slant here. I'm trying to simplify this. Um, I'm going to put like a wedge shape here, kind of like the edge of an axe head, and draw that for the feet. It kind of standing like this. Let's just do that. Okay, so I'm going to go over my lines, make sure it's looking the way I want. What's the next step I want to do? I want to like kind of like determine where the tips of the fingers are before I ever even draw them. If you stand up and you hold your hands at your sides, and we're doing a super easy front view. Um, if you do this and you want to do more, you want to challenge yourself more, do a different pose. There's a bunch of them on this other sheet, basic poses, you, or make up your own. Have your brother or sister pose for you and draw. But uh, if the hands come down to here, I know that's, that's where they are. And the hand is about equal to the size of the head. You can put your hand up to your face, smack yourself in the face. Don't really, but uh, it's about the same size as your face. It's slightly smaller than your head, so that's about how big I'll, I'll make the hand. If I go like this, the shoulder, and then make like a shape like this, it kind of gives me a basic idea of what... I'm not trying to draw any detail, I'm just laying it out. It's like the shoulder comes down, and this is the shoulder muscle, and then there's like a bicep, and then you have your forearm here. Something like this. I'm not really interested in that because this, this is going to have a costume and stuff, you know, it's going to have um, clothes on, it's going to have like astronaut suit. I don't want to make this too small, this is, this is kind of going to be here. That's, that's pretty good. Make sure my overlapping is correct. The chest comes out in front of the the uh, arms in this case. All right. So the feet and the hands are roughly the same size as the head. The knees are one fourth of the way up. The crotch or the where we call it is about halfway up. The armpits are three quarters of the way up and then the last quarter all the, all the way up to the top is the top of the head and there we have the basic 
proportions of the figure. I'm going to use this to um, create my, my drawing on top of this. I'm not sure about this part right here, but uh, I'll do a little more. We'll come back. Because I uh, have the under drawing correct, I can draw over it using my reference uh, character that has the characteristics, in this case, of a rabbit mixed with a human. I'm going to work on this a little bit more. I, I really don't, really not super happy with this, but I, I think I did show how to go about setting up with the correct proportion. And I, and I want you to practice this. So like I just move, if I want this arm to move, nothing's changed in the length of an arm. I can just take this length here, this would be where the elbow is, and just swing this up. If he's waving at us, the elbow is going to bend here. It's still the same, like the head size, the, the upper arm and the lower arm are all about equal in size. So this head and this forearm should definitely be about the same. I'll take this and change. And it's just saying if you have a, yeah, that's better. If you have a forearm that's like three times longer than the head, you need to assess that. And like this is the rule. This is probably going to go more like this. And he may be wearing like space gloves, but it's in like the shape of a paw instead of a hand. I'm trying to decide. I want him to look kind of more like a more serious rabbit astronaut. He's looking for a planet carrot or whatever he's doing. But uh, I'm not trying to make him look too silly. So I have to make these kind of decisions where I want him to be funny, uh, serious. I don't know how serious uh, astronaut rabbit can be, but uh, it's all about the aesthetic you're looking for. I think I'm going to change his head. I'm going to work on this a little bit more, but. So I'm asking you to lay out like a very light under drawing and create your character over top of it and uh, then color it in. Fix it all up, color it in and uh, submit it. I can't wait to see it. So I'm making some changes. I've shortened the neck a little bit. Made it a little wider than it was. It just kind of makes him seem tougher. If the li the neck is long and skinny, it kind of makes him seem like, kind of like a geek. You know, if that's what I wanted, I might have made the lo the the neck long and skinny. Um, I think this makes him more look a little more like a you know tough, a little bit tougher. Um, I'm gonna go in and you know work on each part until I'm happy. And you know, it might be a bit of a struggle, but I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, let's see. Maybe some kind of hoses or something, the air supply coming through, like I saw in my reference there. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't like it right there. I think I'll have it come over this way. I changed the helmet a little bit. I'm kind of make it a little more elaborate take away things that I don't need with the eraser. When you're drawing something round, you have to decide if the arc is going up or down. I had the arc on his stomach like going up this way, but that wasn't correct. It depends on where your eye level is. It's either going to be a smile or a frown. Like here on the cuff of the pants, it's it's a smile. Okay. Um, See any? I don't see any going the other way. This way, this way. When I when I get up to here, if I have something round, it will start to go this way, because I'm looking upwards at it. Right, so pay attention to that. Think about the the three dimensional quality of whatever you're drawing. Maybe another tube uh, coming again through there. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this up, make some changes, maybe like get it really nice and color it in. I'll show you when I'm done. I want you to spend your time practicing the body. Remember the top of the body is all above this. This would be like the pelvis. This is like your 
Here's where your head is. There's a neck. Don't forget. This is like the rib cage. All right. The legs come out and the femur, it comes down to here where the knees are. You have the, so the fibula and tibia, or, yeah, fibula and tibia, the two bones here. Think about the skeleton and the feet. Feet are about the size of the head. Out of here comes, and your armpits are, actually the pit, the armpits are around here. I'm going to lower that a little bit. And then the hands come down to halfway down the top part of the leg. Let's just focus on doing that. Like if you have a elbow, you know, an elbow here, here it should be in the same place on the other side, the wrist, hands. It's actually closer there. So I'm going, I'm penetrating down another layer lower down to the skeleton. It's like a framework obviously of the body, but you can see it under there. I build my, my costume and my character on top of this structure. Let's see what you do. All right. I decided to color this in, so I'm going about it with colored pencils, which they're kind of hard to work with. Honestly, a lot of the times the paper shows through if you make a mark, it's really hard to get rid of it. You kind of, I kind of just start off with like putting down some lighter colors and I'll just keep adding on top and blending different colors together. Like the base color of the suit is like this aqua color, but then in the darker areas, I'll put in like a little bit darker of a blue, maybe push it down into the paper a little harder. And then if I want to do something like even darker, like shade it a little bit more. I'll use like some purples, so I'm using more than one color.